Hey guys, Matt with Carolina Coops here, and we are at the Airbnb we're staying at. We're doing a custom coop up in Ohio, and I just happened to be walking outside this beautiful morning, and I found something quite interesting, and I just wanted to talk about it. So, camera lady, come with me. You know, it's that time of year. It's springtime. Well, for Southerners, I guess it's springtime. Baby chick season's upon us, and this is when you're out shopping around for chicken coops. And, you know, we build coops day in and day out, and we talk a lot about the Carolina coop. I was always taught you don't beat up your competition. I don't consider the Chinese coops to be competition or overseas, I believe I'm supposed to call it. But either way, um, I wanted to point out some things that you must think about. So let's just think of this as education. I'm not gonna really beat them up, but here's a textbook example of a very common coop that you're gonna see on websites telling you, hey, buy this coop for this number of chickens. Now, um, hopefully you can see how small it is. Number one thing when buying a coop, it's all about size, and you've got to have the chicken to coop ratio correct. So the first area they're going to lie to you about is a coop like this, they're going to say eight chickens. Easily, they'll say eight chickens. Check it out on other websites, I guarantee it. Maybe our video editing lady will bring it up somewhere. Um, way, way, way too small. Uh, the quality, we see these types of coops all the time, don't even last a year. Uh, that's just because they're cheap. But more importantly, let, let's talk about the chickens. Um, ventilation, you gotta have as much ventilation as possible. I literally see one hole right here. And it doesn't even go through the other side. So when you're shopping for a coop, think about not just ventilation, but lots of ventilation and cross ventilation. You gotta make sure the hen house can breathe. Uh, the other thing is this drives me nuts. That looks like a big hole that a predator could get in well, also. E exactly, that's a good point. Um, and more than likely there might have been screen attached, but it just doesn't last. And look at that's a quarter inch thick wood. You try to adhere screen to it, it's just not going to stay. So that, that's a very good point. Um, yeah, with the quality of the craftsmanship here and the quality of the materials, it's not going to last and predator proofing is just, it's not an option here. So that's completely out of the question. But again, to take it a step further, let's talk about what the chickens will think about this coop. No, actually, what will you think about it when it comes time to clean? Um, this concept, it sounds great, but let me tell you, everyone that has it, they use it right now, I guarantee you they're gonna tell you it sucks. When we go to replace these coops with our nice Carolina coop, they always say, this part sucks. Here's your pull-out tray. I have a horrible back. I hate bending over. Uh, so now I'm gonna bend over, pull this out, and, um, if you're brand new to chickens, you may think, oh, that's nice and easy. Here's what happens, I call it the guillotine effect. Chicken droppings, 50% of their defecation is at night when they're on the roost bars. And it piles up pretty thick. <laughs> you could, you'd have to clean this out every day, even after they're done for the night of their defecation. Um, you're gonna pull this out, and it gets cut off. It gets guillotine right here. Um, so pull out trays, awful, awful idea. Um, and it's going to get warped like that, and then it's going to yeah. fling poop up in your face when you go to pull it out, yeah. and the it, poop's going to drop all over, and it's, it's just going to make a mess. So, I'm sorry, pull-out trays, they just do not work. If you are looking at one that you want a pull-out tray, get one that has a big opening. But why bend over? Why pull anything out when you can have a coop where it's just a pulling, sweeping motion? Or even better, a coop that can go three years before you got to clean it. Anyways, okay, yes. Um, so, apparently this door was right here that fell off easy to open um, for predators. Yeah, look at the roost bars. Now, I was gonna try to grab a tape measure. Um, those are five eighths, five eighths dowels. I mean, that is just awful. Your chickens will absolutely hate roosting on there. You can see how close they are. You want at least two, two and a half inches wide roost bars. You want them at least a foot apart. Um, yeah. There's maybe six inches between those. Yeah, if that. So, just absolutely awful. And then the other thing too, something that you may not think about, but when it comes to the run size, uh, you're gonna wanna put your food and water in there, so now it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get in there and change it versus be able to walk into a nice tall run. But also, you don't want an open roof on your run. It just creates a mess. Water's gonna get in there, it's gonna ruin the food. Uh, they have no chance for shade if they're in there full time. So these are just things to consider when you're looking at these tiny little coops. And speaking of tiny, it, when you look at these pictures online, on their website, they make them look big. They're not. Pay close attention to those sizes. And you can always go to carolinacoops.com or give us a call and learn, you know, what size coop should I have for 
my number of chickens. Just for size ratio. Jetta, can you come stand by this, please? Oh, we're still filming. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Can you go stand by this, please? Another size scale. So just so you can see a little bit better scale. She's... I don't do a good job. Look at that. How tall are you, baby? Jetta, how old are you? Four and a half. She's four and a half. She's very tall for a four and a half year old, but still, you can see just how small the coop is. Obviously not an adult is going to walk into that run area or want to bend over right down to the ground to do anything with that hen house. It sucks for you and it sucks for the chickens. It's just that simple. They make them look great on all these websites. Yeah, the egg hutch. Um, one of the most important parts of a hen house. After the size is how you're going to be able to get to the eggs and you want to make sure it's going to function well. And one, this is really, really small and it's, you know, again, quality. It's just not going to be there, but they're going to leak. And the other thing, too, I've mentioned in a couple other videos, is it's not good to have an egg hutch where the roof lifts up because if you've got a hen in there, you could, you could startle her. So why not make it so that you come in from the side and get easy access, but of course it's always easier when they're up higher, like on our coops. You know, and the other thing that always concerns me when I see these coops is I wonder how many people want to get into the hobby for their kids, for themselves, you know, to have the fresh eggs, have chickens as pets, and you think that it's a difficult hobby because you run into problems like diseases, they become stressed, you have predation problems. It's not the chickens. The chickens are extremely easy to keep if you've got the right coop. If you have the wrong coop, it's a, it's a nightmare. So just keep that in mind. If you're running into problems, you think oh, it's something you're doing wrong with the chickens, take a look at your coop. More than likely, that's the problem, and it's going to start with size. Either way, I hope that video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And more importantly, if you want to see some of the best coops on this planet, carolinacoops.com. Check us out. Thanks for watching.